Let's talk to Craig Earlham from Oanda. Very good morning to you, young Craig. Good morning. What a fascinating time this is to be involved in <laughs> global markets. Yeah, I mean, wh where do you begin? It, it seems like the market's uh, in a bit of free fall once again. Uh, Red October has been extended now to uh, Red November as well. Uh, we saw a little brief bounce, but it didn't uh, really last too long. Uh, we've seen oil plunging as well. Even cryptos have been caught up in this. We've finally seen a break below uh, $6,000 in Bitcoin. So it's become a lot more interesting there. Back to the good old days of 10% moves. Uh, and currencies has not escaped this at all. Um, the US dollar seems to be suffering a bit in the near term. There's plenty of political stories which are really driving this. The US-China trade tensions are continuing to hang over the markets. Yep. Brexit is finally moving. Uh, and the Italian debt situation, we've seen further developments this morning. We're not short of uh, talking points. Right, and you haven't even mentioned Mr. Trump there. Yeah, I mean, he's been a bit quiet by his own standards. Um, I think he's just letting everyone else self-destruct for a little bit and have a little bit of a break. Maybe he's playing a bit of golf, um, keeping himself to himself after these midterm elections, let a couple of things die down. The Khashoggi thing, we've obviously um, heard some reports overnight that suggest that there's no plans to follow up with any uh, form of sanctions against the Saudi Arabia, despite the anticipated involvement of the Crown, yep. uh, the crown Prince. Um, he's been a bit quiet on trade. Uh, I think he's probably just trying to stay on the sidelines, which is very unlike him. OK. Um, Theresa May, we've got to the middle of the week. She's still the Prime Minister. Does that, are you surprised by that? I mean... Sorry, are she, the markets got... surprised by that? Yeah, I mean, the markets aren't always... No, well, I guess the markets are always surprised, I think, at the moment, you see. The massive swings we see in the pound suggest that we're always caught, being caught off guard. I think Theresa May, uh, she really is just incredibly resilient, it seems, that no matter what happens, she seems to just find a way to survive. She's a, she, she's a bit of a cockroach, really. Um, she just, there, there seems to be nothing can kill her off. And uh, we're seeing now, it looked as though we were getting close to the number of letters needed to call a vote. They seem to have fallen short, despite Jacob Rees-Mogg handing his in, which seemed to be the sign that things were finally moving. You wonder if they've fallen short of getting the 48 letters needed to even trigger a leadership challenge, what chance do they have of getting another 110 votes in Parliament in order to actually remove her? So this seems to have fallen by the wayside now. It looks as though she's going to see the year out. But again, thing, the, the story changes all the time. Yeah. Uh, and if there's a threat that this isn't going to get through Parliament, this Brexit deal, then she has to be the first one to fall. Understood. OK, let's go to a currency pair that we've been following with you in recent weeks, the Aussie against the US dollar. Got to say the technicals and your, your thoughts about this basically finding a sort of rounding base and a reason perhaps that the, the bear move is over. Um, well done you. Where does it go from here? Yeah, I had to get one right eventually, right? Um, yeah, we, did, we broke out nicely. This has been a lovely technical chart. This and the Kiwi dollar as well. Two very lovely technical charts. And we had a nice breakout of that falling channel. We've seen a couple of moves higher since, a couple of higher highs and lows. From, so from a technical standpoint, it's working out very well. Hitting the key resistance levels and uh, seeing some profit taking, hitting the support levels uh, and seeing some buying. So it really is playing out quite nicely. I'm looking at the chart right now. I still do think there is potential for upside here. And I do think there's potential downside generally for the US dollar. In terms of where the rotation points are, I think 71.50, 72 looks very interesting. We could potentially see some buying pressure there. And looking more into the medium term, I think 75 is a potentially uh, is a very plausible level, which will become very interesting because you see the culmination of moving averages. It's roughly around a third to a half or, or of the initial decline uh, in this pair, which makes it an area of interest. And it's also a long-standing level of interest as well. So I think there's potentially some more upside to come here um, before we start to hit some interesting technical zones. Understood. And finally, any sort of favourite, anything obvious or not obvious in the, the currency markets at the moment? I think it's really difficult because the pound's so volatile that yep. any pound pair is really just trading on a whim depending on what the Brexit news of the day is. So while we are seeing some consolidation, for example, in your pound dollar pair, um, we are coming from very wide ranges, 127 through 133. But I think once we start to see some movement towards a deal or towards no deal, you will start to see those ranges breaking out. And it could be quite an aggressive move the more we consolidate in the meantime. Euro dollar's looking a little bit wavy as well, but I do certainly think there's a plenty uh, of upside potential. 
potential here. I think we're lots of swings in the yen depending on the risk appetite on the day. So I'm not really too concerned with those pairs right now. I do think it is the, the likes of the Australian dollar uh, and the Kiwi dollar right now which are proving to be by far the most interesting. And I've got to say, oil. <laughs> oil. Um, yeah, I mean, it's been such an aggressive sell-off for the last six weeks. Uh, and it, I think we are potentially nearing a bottom now. I don't want to be that, that guy who, who, calls, who makes these, these big calls and tries to pick the bottoms. But we are now hitting levels that we've not seen in a long time. I do think in the same way that the market was overstretched to the upside, it's now looking a little bit overstretched to the downside. We're less than two weeks now until the OPEC uh, plus meeting, which is OPEC and its allies, including Russia, where I expect, given the recent data that we've seen, we could potentially be looking at a supply cut. And if they live up to market expectations, that could put a nice little flaw uh, in WTI and Brent. So maybe some near-term potential downside, but I think the vast majority, uh, and I mean that vast majority, of this sell-off, uh, personally, I think is probably now behind us. Understood. Craig, on that note, Thought-provoking as always, thank you very much indeed. That's Craig Earlham from Oanda. Thank you.